Recently, while going through the toy aisles, I noticed a new challenger to the little girl's toy line. Alongside of Monsters High, Bratz, and Equestria Girls, we now have these fairy tale characters. The problem I have with this is that these are all really great, interesting ideas. I love the idea of monsters going to high school and fairy tale characters having children and ponies being humans. But the problem I have with these dolls is they all look identical to each other. Wait right there! Whoa, who are you? My name is Time Jump. I'm a time-traveling pony that comes from the future. Great start, you've made an error in your communications. What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What error? Those aren't fairy tale high school dolls. Those are mossy girls. There's yet another doll series out there causing mass confusion among the consumers. Oh man, Time Jump, this is heavy. I know, isn't it? I can't believe this. I can't believe that I didn't catch this until after I was editing the video. These aren't the same dolls. These are different dolls. It just goes to show you just how identical these dolls are. How unoriginal they are with their art styles. If I can't tell them apart when I'm casually taking their pictures in the toy aisle, and when I'm uploading them to the computer, I have to wait until the editing stage to see my mistake. It just goes to show how similar all these doll types are. There's absolutely nothing distinctive about them except for their accessories. Thanks, Time Jump, for pointing out my mistake. And I'll see you again in the future. Or perhaps the past. Who knows? Anyhow, I have to be going. Try not to make any more mistakes in your presentations, or else I'll have to come back here and correct them. We'll see each other again if you ever do a review of a series that happened in the 90s or 80s, or even further back. Until then, good luck with your show. Thank you, Pony of Time. Anyhow, back to my pre-recorded session. Take them outside of their packaging, put them next to each other, and you can't tell them apart. They all have the same heads, the same arms, same legs, the same bodies. There's nothing distinctive about the art design of the characters. They take really great ideas, and then they mess it all up by having generic, bland, uninteresting art design. Oh, I have one more thing to note on the dolls topic. And that's the fact that there are dolls that are made uniquely and made to look special. They're done the way that I consider interesting. And that's dolls like Strawberry Shortcake, Sophia the First, who have highly unique body structures to their design. You put a strawberry shortcake next to a monster's high girl or a fairy tale high or a moxie girl or an equestria girl and she'll look clearly different and she'll have clear different features about her. And I do also have to admit that the moxie girls of all of the identical dolls is the one that has the most unique extra features, although I'm not very keen on the word moxie. In movies like Hotel Transylvania and episodes like Bats showing off Fluttershy's vampire transformation, you have a way better, way more interesting monster design for your characters. Even Hotel Transylvania is able to present us with a much better writing for these characters. And ultimately that's what it's going to come down to. What will make these series stand out and that's going to be the writing of the characters. Can you take 
a uninteresting, generic, bland, boring art design and make it look good, make it be distinctive. And that is where the writing is going to come in. The writing for Equestria Girls is already good. The writing for Monsters High is already bad. It's the other series that I have yet to check out and judge. If only the writing for Monsters High could match the awesome writing of Hotel Transylvania, I could have possibly have gotten on board with the series. And yet, this still doesn't excuse my other gripe, is that the dolls themselves are too generic and boring. Here's an example of how you could have made these dolls more interesting. Add some more monstrous features. Just as Fluttershy turning into Flutter Bat looks distinctively more monster-like while still being adorable, you could have pulled off the same reaction with the Monster High characters. Add some dills and fur and fins and fangs and claws and some interesting eye shapes and slime and stuff as needed while still keeping them relatively adorable. Instead of having to keep them looking beautiful and slender and sexy and whatever else, you should have bulked them up, added some muscle, covered them with a little bit of texture. That would have made the dolls themselves more distinctive and then you can distinguish the difference between one series and the next when you're blindly shopping down the aisle and you don't know enough about the dolls to tell one from the other. What we have instead is an old marketing ploy that's been around for a long time and is still around and that's where all of the rival toy figures all look nearly identical to each other. Similar stuff happened back in the day with Power Rangers versus VR Troopers versus Beetleboards versus Voltron with everything looking similar or to uh, Transformers versus Dobots or Transformers versus Voltron or uh, however you want to put it. There's always been a series and a series that was the imitator. The point is, is that they take really awesome ideas and they present them with a lame art style so you're already turned off halfway by the time you get to the toy series. That means that the only thing that can save these series is, is good writing. And we're only getting good writing right now with Equestria Girls. It would have been so nice if the art style could have brought its A-game from the beginning. But tell me what you think. Thank you for watching 